be New York's new metal authority. It's nine o'clock, and as promised, Clay Scott from Circle of Dust. How you doing, man? In the studio. It's almost like live after death, really. That's why we're clapping, because it's almost like you're back from the grave. Um, I, I, I think I'm still in the grave, actually. I haven't really made it back yet. Really? Working my way towards that. Hmm. I'm curious as to what reason I'm not picking you up from. Uh, try a different mic. Swap mics. Yes, we're going to swap mics. By the way, this is 88.1 WCWP. I know why the mic's not working. <clears throat> why is that? Because that's the one I was going to use. Uh, if I had picked this one, then this one wouldn't have worked. Gotcha. Is this one working right now? This one is working. Great. Yes. So, now that we've got our mic problems all worked out, um, you got a new album out called Disengage. Correct. Just talk to me about it. Say what you got to say. Uh, Plug the hell out of your album. I'm not really sure where to start with it. Um, okay, I'll help you. Start at the end. Where did it come from? Where did it come from? Yes. What, what, well, what stemmed funny. this release? Uh... <clears throat> Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know how I could answer that without giving a bit of history. Um, the last um, Circle of Dust record was put out on a label called REX. They were based out of Nashville without getting uh, too intimate and boring with all the details. Um, there were legal battles that ensued uh, at the end of 95 that lasted for a year and a half that kind of tied me up. Um, creatively, I couldn't sign to another label. I couldn't release another record on REX. REX. They had no distribution. Um, so basically, um, that was when I had decided to uh, technically put an end to Circle of Dust and pursue other things. <clears throat> and um, I had had material that I had started writing for a new record and obviously couldn't release. So um, Disengage actually was born from some of that material as well as um, some other material that I had sitting around from some other projects I, ha I had started and never finished. Um, and some brand new stuff. So uh, I think when it came time to uh, pay the rent and uh, it was getting a little low, I needed to do another record. And, um, you know, of course, Circle of Dust was the first thing that uh, I wanted to do. So I had material for it, got a budget, found a label, um, probably picked the wrong one, but uh, I did it nonetheless, and uh, there it is. It's excellent. We've been playing the heck out of it. Thank you. Actually, I don't think it was last Saturday night, but the Saturday night before... Oh, wait, I might have my days confused. I'm not sure today. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what, like, because I went to Stuck Mojo one Saturday night. I think it was last Saturday night, but oh, I'm not yeah. positive. So the Saturday night that Stuck Mojo wasn't, I played, like, the first, I played tracks one, two, three, five, seven, eight, ten. You're trying to clear out all your listeners? Is that what you're... <laughs> oh, absolutely not. People objective? were loving it. People thought it was excellent. And I, I didn't get into the remixes because I felt like people should hear the originals before. Sure. Yeah. Sure. You, know, you get a little freaky on them. And uh, the instrumental stuff I tried to stay away from because it's really not heavy. So, Well, it's heavy in its own way. It's heavy in its own I like it, personally. But if I was listening to the radio, I'd be like, where are the words? Right. <laughs> you know. It's, it's radio policy. I'm sure you know these things. Sure. No sure. words people don't like. People have short attention spans. Depends on, like, uh, I guess what kind of show. If it yeah, were really. Like the, the astral projection, <clears throat> yeah. UH show or something. No, it, um, actually, speaking a little bit about those pieces, I mean, those are. are um, am I making a lot of noise? Those are uh, um, just as much a part of the album as I feel as as the other songs are for their own reasons. They they capture an entirely different mood. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I've actually had people tell me that those were their favorite tracks on the record, as opposed to the other stuff. So I, I, you know, it's really relative to the listener. Track eight. I love track eight. Track eight. I couldn't tell you the name because I... I think that one's mesmerized. Yes. Can I tell you a little history about that? Please. That was not supposed to be on the record. Um, that was Why? probably the track that I would have left off. And um, I, to, much to my amazement, that is the track that um, most people have commented on, and I'm not really sure why. Um, it was written, actually, as a birthday gift for someone a few years ago, and it ended up making it to the record. When I, when I needed material, I had it. thought it was a good enough song, needed some work revamped it and uh there it is <laughs> my friends didn't understand it i remember i was driving we were going to hooters <laughs> oh, <laughs> on that's way a perfect to, song to listen to on the way to hooters on right? our way out to hooters and uh actually it was my station student general manager was in the car with me and he was listening to it and he just kept going it felt like right here he should have just started going ballistic and screaming and it's like you can't tell but you do like right like when the chorus starts to get really into it <laughs> like in the background in a lower I guess track or mm -hmm. I don't know it's what mixed they call. lower yeah, mixed lower 
you hear it, and he wasn't listening for it. And I'm like, he's going nuts. I'm like, listen. I'm like, it's good. So it's like, it's a good song. But uh, yeah, actually, he liked at least the rest of the album. That, that song, you know, the problem was he felt it should rock, and I was just like, it rocks, dude. I'm like, you have no ear. Well, again, it's relative. I mean, um, <clears throat> one thing that's different, I think, from this circle release from many of the others is um, it's not like, uh, well, again, I can't really even get into that without um, first saying that this is technically the second Circle of Dust release that I've ever done. I did my first record in 91. And then the Brainchild Project, if anybody knows any of the history of, of Circle of Dust, there was a, a CD called Circle of Dust Brainchild was the name of the record. Yeah. That was originally a project, and it wasn't a Circle of Dust album, and it was released later as a Circle of Dust record because um, REX Records that I was signed to at the time had landed distribution through Relativity. And they wanted to release a product that was already finished and ready to go. And I totally did not want them to release my first record because that wasn't ready. So they basically took that brainchild project and made it a Circle of Dust record. And, um, you know, I had done stuff like Ardell Park and I've worked with Prong and things like that, but I had never really written another Circle of Dust record. So this is technically wow. the second record. You're talking about six or seven years between my albums right now. So there is a, um, there is a bit of a difference sonically and musically for obvious reasons. A lot of time has passed. So... Um, Wow. I, so, I, you know, I didn't go into this with this, like, you know, I want to make the heaviest record I could possibly make. That's not... I'm much more concentrating on songwriting and uh, yeah, you melody, things like that. Because for me personally, that's what I like to listen to. That's what, that's what, that's what I'm into. That's what I've always been into. I, I think... Go, I mean, in my opinion, uh, Brainchild, which isn't even, as you said, technically a Circle of Dust record, was probably, like, the most heavy guitar-driven sort of thing. Yeah, because it was a project. It was written yeah. specifically to be that. Yeah, but this this album is it's whereas it's heavy, it's also like very dark in a lot of spots. A lot darker than I feel than Circle of Dust, the self titled album, mm, yeah. which I love as well. But uh, yeah, it was definitely a lot darker and had a lot more feeling to it. I think. Hopefully, it's progress. Yes, it sounds like. I try to deceive myself and, and believe that that's what you know. That's what it's <laughs> called. <clears throat> Who knows what the real story is? I feel like I got S.A. Adams on again. As, have you ever met S.A. Adams? No. He comes on here and he puts out his record. He's just like, oh, you're playing that crap? You know, and he's, every other... This sucks, 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 sucks. I mean, you're not that bad. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to ultra downgrade it, but you have to remember, too, a lot of this material is a few years old to me already, so... Yeah, so it's, I, I really you've, you've had a little time with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've had too much time with it. How does it feel? Like, do you sit there and you, you say, you know, it's... It's been some of the material has been laying around stuff like that. How does it feel when you put it all together? Did it, did it make sense when you put it together? Did, it, did I, you I hesitated at first when you when you were putting this material together. No, there wasn't any hesit. You know, I wasn't hesitant at all. Um, I think it was uh, more like I looked at what I had and tried to figure out how to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. I went back to the tracks that I had written a few years before and revamped them, remixed them, uh, obviously re-recorded parts and things like that. And um, I really felt when the finished product was done that it was cohesive. At least to me, it was so. That's great. You want to go into a song? Let, let these people know what we're yeah, talking I about. Think we should uh, wake everybody up who <laughs> fell asleep during this. How about not only do we go into a song, but we give away a CD? We can do like that. that. We can give it away. Uh, Thanks to to Mark Meltzer at Syndicate. Yes, Mr. Mazo, very nice guy. Love Noogie and him. <laughs> give us a call, first caller five one six. We're hanging out with Clay Scott from Circle of Dust, and this is DJ Peluso on your New York's New Metal Authority. Here's a. Uh, I don't want to play Waste of Time because I opened my show with that. Okay. Uh, you pick a song. Go to the track to Refractor. Okay, this is Refractor. You want to give us a little background on it? Um, Guess not. Uh, what kind of background can I give you? Um, <laughs> this is this couple of years old. He wrote it. 88.1 WCWP. <laughs> We're back here on 88.1 WCWP, New York's New Metal Authority. Clay Scott's still in the house. He hasn't left yet, so I guess he still loves us. <laughs> no, I haven't left yet. I haven't gotten kicked out either, so... It's because we got the soda. He loves the soda. Mm. Drinking it like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. I'm lying. That's me, but that's okay. Okay, so we slipped out of Refactor with just about no explanation. <laughs> mm, I, I'm not really sure what I can even say about it. Really? It's like that far distant? Oh, yeah, it is. I love that song. It's, um, I, I think uh, if I were to redo it now, it'd probably be a little even more different than it is now, but... um. Really? Uh, yeah, well, actually, that, that was written two completely different parts. The, the beginning verses that are a little quicker than everything else was written, uh, that was probably written, I, I, I don't even know, I don't know how to gauge it, probably two years, two and a half years ago. And then the chorus part, which is where the tempo changes or slows down, um, 
was written after that. I was in a different mindset musically. That's usually when the best stuff happens because I, I'll be influenced by something, come back to a piece that I started a month or two later with a totally different idea and try to combine it into the same song. And you end up with something that uh, you know either totally works or it totally doesn't. See, folks, yeah. that, that's a real musician at work right there. Now, Tony, you want to talk? This guy plays like everything. That's awesome. Okay, you want to? Could you list not for us, everything? Could you list for us what you do play? <laughs> what I do play? Yes. What What you have the ability to? Um, I'm not sure if I can really play anything. Really? No, I'm just kidding. Well, I've seen you play guitar, so I know no, you can at least do that. I'm kidding. And uh, you basically I, did this entire there, album all by yourself. So. Well, there's a phrase that comes to mind. It's um, <laughs> jack of all trades, but master of none. I think, <laughs> that, I think, that, I think that applies here. I, I really, I look at what I do. I use my instruments and whatever instrument that may be as a, a tool for the end result. I want, I want to write a song. And um, if I hear a horn in this song, I'm going to go find a horn and I'll play around with it until it comes up with, until it sounds like something I want it to. It doesn't mean that I'm going to join the brass section and, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, be grooving along with these people because I probably can't do that. But as far as playing guitar is concerned, as far as drums, bass, what have you, you know, the keys, um, uh, programming, pretty much all self-taught and it was for those reasons i just decided wow. well i mean i started on the drums at uh 14 or so and um never really had lessons or anything i just watched a lot of people and practiced a hell of a lot <clears throat> and probably sucked really bad for a while <laughs> and uh feeling. yeah but you learn that's how you learn and played in a lot of really bad bands you know and that's just that's you know that that's the price of progress and um you know uh, as i as i've gone on i realized you, you can't write a song on the drums, technically. So uh, I just watched people play guitar and got one of my own, started doing that. And it just branched off from there and uh, <clears throat> discovered electronic um, music, so to speak. Probably in the late 80s, a friend had gotten a sequence or a keyboard workstation. I don't know. It just fascinated me, the uh, capacity to create without being constrained to a drum or a guitar or a bass or any traditional instruments that I had been accustomed to to that point. So... You know, instrumentation-wise and, and, and the technology and everything that I do, it's all just for the end result, which is the song, um, whatever that means. Wow. That's, that, was, that was beautiful, actually. That, that, that was I, great. I had brought my cue cards with me. That's <laughs> right. Oh, jeez. Look at that. That's what, you are cheating Reading so right bad. <laughs> well, also, speaking of end result, this album has two of them. <laughs> has two what? Technically, end results. You have Correct. Disengage. Right. And refracted chasm. Right. Now, what made you decide to uh, go ballistic on the second half and remix and uh, redo a lot of stuff? Well, nothing, um, unfortunately, was not my decision to put both of these separate entities on one CD. I was kind of forced into that situation. Um, the refractor chasm half of the CD was supposed to be a CD single. Um, so um, I had done the artwork for it as well, as for a separate single as well as the remixes. And um, when came time to deliver... I was informed that they weren't going to do it at all. So I uh, <clears throat> had to work it out with them so that they would at least put the tracks, the music part of it, at the end of the full-length Disengage release. But I wanted to keep some, co some sort of separation there so people knew that these were meant to be different, two different releases. You know, apart, yeah. So the remi but remixes in general are just a natural progression. I mean, I've done specifically just remixes for, for bands in general. Uh, Prong being probably one that most people would know. Um, that was, uh, which, what song was that? Uh, Rude Awakening. Okay. <clears throat> that was their last, uh, I think their last epic release. I think um, that was their last, that was their last release. That was their last, yeah. Last they period. did do a tour though a couple of months ago. It wasn't even them. I think it was just like Tommy Victor. It was Tommy, yeah, it was Tommy. It yeah, was, it was Tommy and, and, and a brand new band, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Mike Muir going around the suicidal tendencies. Right, you know and it's what really I mean? just him, sure. Sure. But um, uh, but as far as the remixes are concerned, I mean that's a natural progression because to tell you the truth, um, I write a song and before it actually hits a final mix, I'm sick and tired of hearing it, and I hear 20 other things that could be done with it, and that that's why uh, it's a natural thing for me to take that song, completely dissect it, and do something else with it. So that's where they came from, where well, that was the purpose, I guess, in doing it. Um, you mentioned artwork, though. I remember you did mention artwork. So uh, not only did you write the songs play just about every instrument and mix them all together and you, you produce the album as well mm -hmm. you designed the artwork for the album yep did that too jesus mm -hmm. see i have this uh problem um and this goes back to another uh um another saying that i heard my whole life it's uh, you know if you want something done right you have, you to, have do to do it yourself, it yourself. And uh, that's basically what it came down to. I just had a lot of ideas, and uh, I don't really trust anybody else with them. So I just uh, 
you know, I realized that my computer that I had been using for how many years was more capable of just, you know, it was more, more capable than just creating music. I mean, I could do so many other things and started messing around with images and visual art. And that's how I had gotten into that. And um, actually, it's very similar to creating music. So that's why it was kind of a natural progression. And uh, whatever, there it is. Like it or not. Another thing that kind of got pulled, I mean, the, uh, the booklet for the, for the CD was actually supposed to be a 16-page booklet. Um, it was trying to get into this little flat. Yeah, it, they, three yeah. Pages, yeah. And again, after the, after the fact, when everything was <coughs> said and done and ready to be delivered, I was informed, um, no, you can't do that. So it was already too late. I had to redo the artwork and kind of fit these big panels into little tiny tiny ones but any specific reason they said you can't do that or just yeah the same reason they always do because they don't want to spend the money oh <clears throat> right. so a uh, couple of pieces of paper people come on get off your asses there you go but that's alright I mean uh, bottom line is it's out it's in stores distributed through Polygram so you can go to uh, just about Virgin for that. Mega yeah. Store or Tower oh that's right College Radio you're not allowed to plug this kind of stuff yeah. but see I'm an artist so I don't have to abide by the rules no so. you don't yeah. <clears throat> okay. well, that's, that's what I heard anyway <laughs> <laughs> I'll say I'm Goody. I, I heard that. You, you can go wherever you let's let's say this for college radio purposes. You can go just about anywhere you want and buy this album. Hopefully, uh, I'm sure we can exclude we a couple of mom and pop it. stores and stuff like that. Sure, but you can still buy this CD just about at any of your ma major music chain stores, and you know, and even the small ones. Yes, and even the small ones. You can I know none of the above out east has 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 the uh, I went CD. There. They got a lot of ECW stuff out there. Hmm. I'm going. I'm doing horrible. <laughs> So uh, let's get out of this hole I'm about to dig myself into. Sure. <laughs> let's give away a CD. Okay. Uh, first caller, 516. How many call? do we have to give away? I don't know. We have three to give away. Okay. We're with Clay Scott. Uh, we'll keep doing this interview thing for a little while longer, and we'll just uh, go nuts and play some music and talk about the movies in South Park. And I'm still <laughs> upset like about the South We have to discuss that later because sure. we're upset. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and uh, let's go into another track. What do you want to hear? Well, um, what do you want to hear? I've, I've heard it enough times. <clears throat> I'll go with Kaz. Let's just, okay, fine, do that. I, I enjoy that. It's, it's a good song. Uh, 88.1 WCWP. 88.1 CWP, New York's New Metal Authority. So you got Clay Scott in the house. And that's the main important thing. That was just Kaz off, Chasm off their latest, Disengage. Slash refractor chasm. Yeah, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Slash. Slash is my big thing tonight. I don't understand why, but it is. Does that mean anything to do with uh, Guns N' Roses? or Absolutely not. You hear this thing about that. Axl Rose? They're making a movie about him? No, I don't even want to know. What? They're know. making a movie uh, loosely based on the life of Axl Rose. So I heard we have a winner. Who is it? Pete Moss? Or uh, Pete, uh, Pete Moss. Pete Plant. Pete Plant from where is Pete it? Pete Broccoli. Ten Pearl Drive or something? Ten Pearl yeah, Drive, yeah. yes. Uh, so I think there's a... I think there might be a crack house around that area or something. Hey, more power to them. <laughs> if it's a crack house, you know what? There's more than one person listening in that house. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Ginger Spice on the cover of uh, Play People magazine. Play People. Yes, we're right, trying to end this it. whole plug thing right now. Yes. Um, tell us more. About Ginger Spice? I don't really know much about it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> damn. I only what you actually just informed me of. Really? <clears throat> That's about it. I'm not really, um, I'm not up on my Spice Girls. Me either, um, unfortunately. Really. I'm working on that. Um, I haven't had enough money yet to buy the record. So uh, that's the problem. Or, uh, I can fully understand, you know, when you have to buy, like, when you have to buy important things, like, you know, I don't know what's more important than the Spice Girls. Let's see, uh, shoe polish. <laughs> <laughs> that might be up there. That's on the top ten. You know, um, speaking of shoes, you have some interesting boots on, and I was taking note of that before. <laughs> Thank you. Where did you get those? Um, they were stolen. Stolen? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, can't, I have to be careful what I say because then people will actually believe me. <laughs> no, I'm glad you mentioned it before I did. Angel Dust. Everybody in the entire world said what? But why, would, why would they say what? Because they don't know yet. Oh. They're not informed as okay. us radio people. Okay. So uh, tell us about it, Angel Dust. Um, well, uh, the first thing I can say is that it's not a drug. Or it was a drug, I suppose, but it's not anymore. And it's really died out of existence. Really, yeah, it really, it really has no, nothing to do with that. Um, <clears throat> getting back to what I was saying before, um, covering the ground or the history of, of Circle of Dust in 1995, um, all this garbage, so to speak, had, had gone down with the label REX that I was in, involved with. Um, and my hands were tied, couldn't do any more records, couldn't sign with anybody else. 
And um, at that same time, um, I was on tour, and I think I actually was somewhere in Tennessee, and I was getting these phone calls from this guy, Chris Angel. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what it was about. And finally called him back, and um, briefly over the phone explained to me this concept of, uh, he had of, of combining like music and magic, and, and he had been doing it for a long time. And um, actually was calling me uh, as far for hiring me to... Um, produce a tape, a demo, or something like that. So anyway, when I got home, um, I met with him. Didn't really expect much, because I'm not really a magic-oriented guy, and I think David Copperfield and people like that are just the cheesiest... Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, you know, just... They're, they're, I, don't, I don't even know if I'd call it. They do um, an art form, just, you know. But what happened is, when I met Chris and saw what he had together, the concept of what a magician was was completely changed. And to make a very long story short, um, we worked together for the next four months writing songs um, for a demo for him. And um, over that period of time, uh, had grown, obviously, uh, together as friends. I mean, he's, he's very similar to what I am as far as work ethic, creativity, um, a lot of things like that. And um, we just decided to join forces, so to speak. And then Angel Dust, Chris Angel and Circle of Dust. And that's, <clears throat> that was where that came from. And... Um, there's, uh, I don't really know what to say about it yet. Um, you can see it on, uh, they're going to actually be re-airing um, uh, a segment that we recorded for the Discovery Channel. It aired in November. Um, it's going to be re-airing on April 25th. I hope I'm getting this right. April 25th, the Discovery Channel is called The Science of Magic. Science of Magic, okay. And you'll get to see a piece of what it is that we do. Um, it's really a conglomerate of many different things. Like musically, it's in the vein, in the genre of Circle of Dust. Chris actually does the vocals, and uh, I handle all the instruments and, and backing vocals and things like that. Um, Chris uh, performs illusions as well. Um, there are performance art pieces. We have characters that are involved in the show. It's much more akin to a Broadway show, or, or an off-Broadway show, I should, should say, uh, or something like Cirque du Soleil, <clears throat> something more um, risque or something like that. Not anything like... Uh, a, a magic show that you would, uh, you know, like David Copperfield. Um, musically, um, it's we have songs that can be played on the radio, like any other project, as well as a whole separate entity, which would be just the theatrical music. So there's a lot of elements and facets to this project. It's very difficult to ca categorize because um, there are so many things that it can do and so many areas that it will be exploited. As a matter of fact, I have with me um, the demo of some of our material, Angel Dust material. Um, if anybody's interested, we'll play that a little bit later. Play it now. Play it now. We're, we're talking about it. Why not? All right, we're talking about it. <laughs> we'll play some now, play some more later. That's fine. You do realize that at, a, at 10 o'clock, the music selection is your choice. Oh, really? Till, till, uh, at 10 o'clock. Uh, you get to be DJ Clayton tonight? You get to be DJ Clayton. Great. So, uh, so this... Um, Ooh, on a recordable. I love playing CDs that look like this. They're just so pretty. But that, that's called Homemade. Homemade. We're what, play what track, track one. Th track one, which is a song called Come Alive. And keep in mind that these are our demos. We are working on a full length release. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Hopefully within the next few months. Now, does this have anything to do with a label yet? Is it signed? Uh, um, or is it going to be put I out independently? I can't really disclose that information at this okay. particular moment for certain reasons, but uh, it'll be out there. So it, it will be out. Yeah, so. it will be out, yeah. And uh, anybody who's been following Circle of Dust probably knows this because um, I know personally <clears throat> I get quite a bit of email and letters of people asking where they can buy the CD. So for the few fortunate people who really care, you get to hear at least a demo version of one of our tracks. Cool. Now. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, you can watch, like I said, the Discovery Channel. Let's April do this 25th. too. April 25th, you know, just to get a, um, a very broad uh, idea of what Angel Dust is about because that was actually shot for a magic segment. So a lot of what was going on was more magically oriented. The show itself is a composite not only of the magic but of the music and many other elements. So listen up. Listen uh, up. Come also, alive. speaking of the website thing, www.dusted.com. Correct. So everybody go there. Like email the crap out of Clay. Yeah, he, he loves reading it. I know him. <laughs> 88.1 WCWP, here's some angel dust. Stuff you won't hear anywhere else? No, nobody else no, heard this nobody, show, right? This is the first time going over the airwaves. 88.1. We've got our first. We, I feel so honored that we're the first. I love saying that. It's And actually meaning it. Because <laughs> there are times you say it's the first and it's not. I'm going to shut up is. now. Here's angel dust. <laughs> Back on 88.1 WCWP, New York's New Metal Authority, discussing several things. Uh, 
exploitation of music and uh, bands like Rammstein and Two and Stinky Finger. All right. Stinky Finger I just made up. Okay. Uh, they do probably exist, though. I'm sh somewhere there's got to be one. And you know what? If I decided to name my band that, I'd get sued. <laughs> they always find you. But um, that was just Angel Dust. First time anybody's ever heard it. Over the airwaves. Over the airwaves. And that was a song called? Come Alive. All right. and uh, Demo version. Demo version. Still demo. sounded excellent. Very clean, very well produced for a demo. Yeah, well, hopefully it'll, it'll be, get even better than that. All right, so um, Angel Dust, like you said, look for in, uh, in a couple of months. Uh, yeah, you can, you can look for us uh, as soon as you'd like. I mean, there is some inf information uh, at www.dusted.com on me. Angel Dust, <laughs> and you can go there for updates as well. You know, that's um, the only thing I, I didn't look at the updates yet. Yeah, it ha there hasn't been any really, up, real, uh, really many updates uh, at dusted.com for a while. Been a little busy, so. <laughs> Tell me about it. You're a tough man to get a hold of. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. I, I have to schedule appointments for myself. <laughs> I talk to myself, you know? Yes, yeah, so the, the whole, uh, well, I've got to go to the bathroom. Can I fit it in between here? Yeah, I've, I've had that. College, freshman semester, it gets you there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, don't th I don't know if I made past my freshman semester. More power remember. to you. I'm slowly but surely finding out. It's it's not as much fun as it looks. <laughs> Did I say college and fun in the same sentence? Mm. So we got you down, and uh, let, let's tell the story of how this interview came to be. Now, I remember I emailed you because I had gotten the CD, and www.dustin. Which I discovered you got... Um slightly early. Slightly early. Slightly early, yes. We won't mention how over the, over the radio waves you probably get arrested. Well, I, I didn't play it, though. That was the important thing. I didn't uh, play it early. I didn't play it earlier than it was supposed to be played. I Actually, before I even played it, I called up Mark Meltzer that night and said, look, dude, I'm like, am I cleared to play this now? He's like, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I like, do accept bribes. I just want you to know that in advance. You do? Yeah, I do accept bribes okay, at this cool. point in my career. All right, cool. Well, we accept bribes here, too. You know, whatever you need. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I emailed you. Speaking of... You're a busy man. I got like this, um, like basically automated thing back. Yeah. Or like preset. I've had to resort to things like that. It's yeah. Just so now it's just like, oh man, no. So I was just like, I actually had to write up a letter back saying, you know, look, I'm from like a radio station and stuff. I'm not just your everyday fan. <laughs> no, I remember. Uh, I think it was three years ago. I was up here with uh, Darren and Jay, <clears throat> with the rest of Circle of Dust at that point, and um, we did an interview. And a lot of time has uh, passed, so I kind of forget yeah. Yeah. names and places. And uh, That's I have a problem after three weeks, never mind three years. So. Yeah, really. <clears throat> now, you mentioned uh, Clank and uh, Jay. Mm -hmm. Where are they now? Clank um, is still Clank, right? Jay's probably still in Glen Cove. And Clank, I don't, I'm not sure where he is. Suppose I heard from somebody that he was doing a couple of shows sometime soon. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. I think there's something coming up. That's cool. Um, Clank also produced by Clay Scott and uh, Jason Tilden, living in Glen Cove. Yeah, Jay is, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I think Jay is uh, actually probably the smartest of the three of us because he's uh, stockbroking right now and probably uh -huh. making real money. Loaded. <laughs> yes. So um, that's that's last I heard. Yes. I will never become that. I'm just too stupid to get out of it. Oh, well. But you know what, though? It, the important thing is that you love the music. And you're in it for the music, you know? Well, I'll tell you the truth. If it weren't for that, <clears throat> I don't think I would uh, still be doing this. No. You see that uh, Wendy's cup over there? Uh -oh. I probably would have been filling that for you tonight if, uh, you know, if I wasn't playing. No, hopefully I'm not serious about that. But um, <laughs> um, Come yeah, on, you're not like Trickster or anything. Well, here. there's... <laughs> I didn't say that. I did. I did. <laughs> That's love. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, like, creativity-wise... Um, I think um, I could never envision myself doing anything other than what I'm doing now. I don't know if I would uh, ever fit into society properly. I don't think I ever fit into society properly. Maybe that's why I do what I do, because I don't have to fit into society properly. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I, I can't see at any point me not being creative to some capacity just because that is what I've uh, done, and that's, it's more part of me now than it ever has been. And, and again, it's not only in the um, the musical sense; it's also in the visual sense and everything else. So it's you know, uh, it's you know, I guess it's part of my fiber, so yeah. to speak. 
your genetic coding. Not to get all dietary or anything. Oh, boy. <laughs> High fiber diets. Okay. Anyway. Um, now, does this kind of thing pay the bills? I mean, are you doing okay? You know, well, without having like a side job? Because like, I, most... I don't have a side job. Um, I'm staying alive. That's cool. And that's about it right now. We had a band down earlier today, and I asked them basically the same question. They were like, one guy, this guy was taller than you and wider. And this guy was like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, like black goatee, long, like jet black hair, looked really, really like kind of greasy and mean, really, really mean looking. And I'm like, so you guys have any sign jobs? He's like, I'm a substitute teacher. And I was like, what? It was just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So, you know, unfortunately, metal's not paying the bills all over the place. No, I mean, it's, it's um, you know, whatever you have to do to get by. I was fortunate enough to um, be able to take on projects and make enough money to stay afloat until the next one came along. You know, uh, my partner Chris and I are really obviously confident in the potential success of Angel Dust, uh, you know, uh, we feel, you know, for obvious reasons, because this is something that's never been done, mm -hmm. and also the combination of the music and the illusions, and so many f because of so many different reasons, um, we're hoping that there's going to come a time where we'll look back and say, "Wow, remember when we used to have to worry about when we were going to eat our, or how we were going to eat our next meal?" Hopefully, that won't be an issue. <laughs> that remains to be seen. Hey, if ever come over to my house, my mom's a halfway decent cook. Great. <laughs> Uh, I may be doing that. What, what time do you get out of here tonight? Um, 11. You're it's more than welcome. Dinner? So we've covered a lot of stuff. I think so. Do you, do you think there's anything that we missed that uh, you'd like to tell these people about? One more time, the website, www.dusted.com. Yeah, dusted.com. D-U-S-T-E-D. -E That's it. There's probably a hundred things that we could cover. Uh, and uh, I can't, of course, because the mic's in front of my face right now. I can't really think of what they would be. Um, that always happens to me, too. But, again, you can get the... Uh, you can get the CD anywhere where CDs are found. If they don't have it, you can order it. It's distributed through Polygram. So uh, that means it should be fairly accessible. And uh, I think we have uh, some shirts and stickers and yes, stuff we too do. that we can, we can give away to anybody who's interested. Pe people just call up. We'll be giving away stuff to random callers. Well, as long as they're not from that crack house. As long as they're not from the crack the house. drive where it is. The yes, the yeah, crack house has won their share. Over there. <laughs> they have a CD. I'm sure they'll probably be fascinated with just looking at the CD for a couple of weeks, and then they might put it in their CD player. They if they haven't could, sold it. They probably don't, they probably don't <laughs> even have a CD player. Uh, probably yeah. still using 8-tracks. I'm, I'm guessing. 8-tracks are just... And I still use 8-tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I wish I had... I don't have a working 8-track player, but oh. I'd use it if I did. But, uh, yes, pick up the CD and uh, call us, 516.1 WCWP. And guess what, kids? We're back with Clay. And uh, it's almost 10 o'clock. It's almost time for him to take over and rock your world. I'm, and, I'm very excited about And that. play some good music. Yeah. Now, curiously, when will Angel Dust be on the road? Um, the, the situation, um, because there are so many facets to the project it's not as simple as getting together a live set and hopping in a van and oh, touring yeah i totally understand that um, a show of this caliber um <clears throat> there's a lot more to it and there's a lot more funding that needs to be raised and things like that so there's no uh we don't have a definitive date that we're going to actually step out on a stage and play um but there are a couple of potential situations in the works one of is uh, of which is a uh <clears throat> a new movie coming out um the shooting gallery is doing um actually d snyder of Twisted Sister, um, wrote it, and I think is the main character in it. And um, we are s tentatively scheduled to be on the soundtrack. Oh, wow. I think with, uh, from what I understand, I think Marilyn Manson, I think Tool, Filter, bands like that, I'm not really sure. Um, and there's also a tour that will follow, um, and we are looking at the possibility of being part of that as well. That would happen probably later on this year. So, I mean, there are things like that that are in the works. Um, uh, also, possibly uh, recording uh, in July sometime uh, for a two-hour special that will be on NBC on the eve of Thanksgiving. Um, it's a, a magic special, and we, will, we uh, are going to be doing some segments for that. Wow. <clears throat> and, you know, again, tentatively, you know, when you see it on your TV, then you know it really happened. <laughs> keep, checking, keep checking the website for the details of that kind of stuff, because that'll be posted there. One more time, www.dusted.com. Correct. Do you know how hard it is for me to say things after I say www? It's just such That's a... That's why I, I think I just... Dusted.com. I think most dusted. people who the internet know about the HTTP, 
you know. Cola that backslash whole, backslash yeah. www dot. You, as a matter of fact, you don't need to uh, have www in, really? in the address. You could just http. I didn't even know Because uh, I know certain websites do that without yeah. it, but yeah. I didn't know you yeah, could do it Yeah, that's one of them. Wow, cool. We got rid of that evil triple W thing. Going on. <laughs> you want to go into one more song and then uh, sure. basically just have an all out party? Sure. I'm with that. Um, how about, yeah, you, how about you talk and I'll figure this out. All right, so the song we're going to play from Circle of Dust is called Mesmerized, which happens to be so far my favorite track on the CD. As always happens with me, though, it kind of, it'll change week by week. The first time I heard the disc, I think it was uh, probably You're a Sucker. I thought that was a great song. The first time I read even like the name of the song, I'm like, kind of Japanese thing. What the? Heck? Yeah, I had that happen. And then it kind of worked out for me when I heard, you're a sucker. And I was like, you're a sucker. Oh, I get it. Okay. Um, now that I'm thoroughly confused and nobody's here, and it's 11.03, I'm just going to play some more Circle of Dust. 88.1 WCWP. You know what? That didn't work out as well as I would have liked. So here you go. 